you today how happy retirees spend $82,770 a year without having millions of dollars in the bank. Hey, Wes, where do you get that money? Where do you get that number, 82,770? Well, I didn't just pull it out of thin air. This is from research that I did uh, over uh, the course of, uh, over, of time in my quest to try to figure out the relationship between money and happiness. How much do you have to have uh, so that you can get to a happy retirement? We found out in the research for my book, You Can Retire Sooner Than You Think, that happy retirees have more money than unhappy retirees, but only to a point. And that's the great part about this is that you don't have to have millions and millions and millions. We've got to have enough to be able to do the things we want to do. Uh, but after a certain point, more money doesn't buy more happiness. But this is a very real number. And I'm going to write this down. I want you to remember this number. And it's it's a number that, that many people watching would say, all right, you know what? I can pretty much do exactly what I want to do in the world on this amount of money. The number is $82,770 per year. That's the number that on average happy retirees have in income when they're in retirement. So I wanted to show you that uh, how you break this number down and how an Amer- how Americans can get to this number uh, without having two, three, five million dollars in the bank. It's it, every day. I, I read some other article that says you need uh, two million, you need three million, you need two point six million in order to have a happy retirement. And, and I think for most Americans, that's just an unattainable number, uh, especially if you're younger and you're thinking, "Hey, I'm just living." Um, it's hard for, to save at all. Uh, I, what I'm what I'm teaching you today, and it's a very important concept in in investment planning, financial planning, is that. All of these larger goals, being able to spend 82770 in retirement while you're not working is a, is a big deal and it takes a lot of work, but it, it gets broken down into several different areas that makes it much more attainable. And that's what I want to walk through with you here today. So thanks for joining uh, and, and we're going to break this down here today. So, so first of all, I want to go into... Let's think about taxes for just a second. Remember that this number, 82,770, is the average overall income pre-tax for retirees, happy retirees in my research. To make this even more memorable, I want to even up the ante a little bit and say, all right, how do I get, how do I, how do I net or spend 82,770? Now also note, remember, that this that could sound like a ton of money for you and you say, Wes, that's crazy. I don't need, I, can, I live on half of that. I live on a quarter of that and that's fair. And then you may be watching this video and you might say, look, I need a lot more than that to live on in retirement and that's fair too. So I'm just picking this number as, as an average and I, and I realize that for some people it might sound like a lot, others might sound like a little bit, but it's a good num- number for us to work with. Now, I also have to remember, we got to pay taxes, even in retirement. Our tax bracket goes down a lot for most people when you get to retirement. So I'm going to start out with a gross number of $100,000. So this is going to be, how do we get to a gross $100,000? So then I can net down to 82770 minus taxes, right? Taxes, what are they going to be? Well, they're going to be between 15 and 17, 15 and 20% for most Americans when you're in retirement. I'm going to pull this number again, not out of thin air, uh, but this number here is so that we can get to my exact number. Minus taxes of 17.23% equals 82,770 in actual spending money uh, throughout the year. So this is the formula we're going for. How do we get to this gross number, 100,000 minus the taxes you can't avoid, down to a net spending number, 82,770. All right, here's how we get there. First of all, you got to realize that this is got to get broken down into a lot of different areas. N- number one, so let's go th- through some of these. Uh, Social Security. We're going to also break this down into potentially an annual pension. You might say, yes, I have a big pension. Some have none. Some have a little, but we'll get to that in a second. And then uh, part-time work. There's a study that was recently published in Time that showed that p- vol- uh, uh, re- retirees that uh, are working part time out of their own through it because they want to volunteering to work part time. There is a lot of happiness research behind that. Lower stress, more life satisfaction. So part time work in retirement 
particularly on a volunteer basis, meaning, meaning that you can, you can do it or not do it, but you're getting paid to do it, uh, there's a lot to be said for that. So don't be afraid. It's not a scary, dirty word, part-time work. Here's how we're going to break this down. So Social Security, on average in America, is about $1,400 per person per month. Last year, uh, the Social Security Administration paid out Nine hundred plus billion dollars to sixty-two million Americans, and you say, "Wes, oh, my Social Security—it's not that big of a deal, or it's not going to be there." Wrong. It's a big deal. It's a big deal for most families, particularly if you're married. Uh, and the if you put it together, you start to take some pretty significant bites at this larger apple. So imagine that your spouse, either you or your spouse, has uh, Social Security in any given year of twenty-four thousand dollars. That's about two thousand dollars a month. A little higher than the average, but also well below the maximum you can get at uh, the, the most you can get at your full retirement age, not 70, but 66 or 67 is about $2,800, $2,700. So two grand a month is very reasonable and it's likely if you've worked a lot of years. Social Security one. Social Security two, let's say you, you or your spouse has worked less and this is only $1,500 a month or $18,000 a year. We're, we're starting to take some pretty decent chunks uh, out of this apple here. Number, number three. Well, less and less folks I work with or families say, Wes, I just retired of this great pension. Teachers still do. Uh, the CDC still does. But uh, or if, you're, if you're working for a government agency. But um, the, the, the reality here is that a lot of you may have had a pension for the first 10, 15, 20 years that you worked. In the last 10 or 20 years, they shut it down. So you get this partial pension. So I'm going to make a modest pension amount here, P for pension, of $8,000 a year. Uh, when I'm doing plan for families, they might say, oh, I have not, my pension is nothing. Well, not, what's nothing? Well, it's $8,000 a year. Well, it's not nothing. Because again, we're taking bites at this larger Apple. Uh, how about this? Now, uh, again, part-time work, PTW, it's not a bad, it's not a dirty word in retirement planning. It's actually good for you. It's good for you psychologically. It keeps you sharp. Uh, let's say that you made no more than a grand a month. You may have made, uh, you may have made a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars a year in retirement. Now I'm always, all, all I'm saying, a grand a month in part-time work, and this can last for a number of years. I'm gonna assume rental income here, again, another pretty common source for happy retirees is rental income. And notice, by the way, multiple streams of income is another really important piece of the equation, uh, and, we're, and we're doing this in real time here. I'm gonna assume zero rent here, but again, it's not uncommon for, for a happy retiree to have a house or two where you're getting money every single month for rent. Well, uh, now we've gotta break this down into uh, if we want to get to $100,000, I need my investment income, my investment income from my portfolio. And we're going to assume, uh, and, and, and I'd like you also watch the, the video on the 4% rule, but the 4% rule is a conservative way in financial planning to say I can take about 4% of my retirement money year one and then ratchet that up for inflation. So that means we need to get to $38,000 here on this. In, in investment income from my portfolio. And all of this together equals, and I'll do this on a separate sheet of paper, this is how this all builds up to $100,000 in gross income. And that is the key. Next question, well, how do I get that $38,000? Well, that's not a small number. Well, yes, you, you're correct. How do you get to $38,000? in annual income if you're only taking 4%? Well, the answer here is that you need $950,000 in savings. Now, that again gets you $38,000 a year. That fills that gap on the list that I just created and, and just like that, you're $100,000 in gross income, you net 82,770 uh, and you're spending, because that's a, a net number, you're actually spending even more or more cash flow than the happy retiree research that I did for my book. Uh, if you want to take this number and let's 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 make this a little even more attainable, in the book I use five hundred thousand uh, dollars as a level that happy retirees need to get to. So not the nine fifty. Let's say a more manageable five hundred thousand we get to retirement. Four percent of that is twenty thousand dollars, right? So four percent of this is twenty thousand dollars. So really all we've done, $20,000, all we've done is we've reduced 
the gross number that I just did by about 18,000. So instead of 100,000, right, uh, my new number here is going to be $82,000 in gross income. Again, right on the money for what happy retirees on average have. So there's the, the, and there's no coincidence in this. This is what my data shows. So this is if you have 500, not that 950 we talked about, you still end up with a gross of $82,000 in retirement. So listen, retirement planning is this long, uh, it's, it's not just a marathon, it's like the Iditarod. It's like, it's a forever, it takes, it takes years and years and years. Um, and, and you can't figure it out in a week or a month or a year. You've gotta figure it out and, and execute over the course of decades. And this is a way to think about retirement planning that doesn't happen all at once. You break the large apple into smaller chunks, smaller pieces, and that's where we're headed here. So uh, happy retirees. Yes, in my book, and my research, 82,770, just talked about how we get there. And I hope that this is super, super helpful to you, your family, and all of those thinking about retirement or early retirement. Again, Wes Moss here. Um, uh, host of Money Matters, WSB Radio in Atlanta. I just wrote about this in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. For those of you who don't live in Atlanta, that's the AJC here, but outside of Atlanta, known, known as the AJC or the, or the Atlanta Journal. With that, thank you so much for joining uh, me and have a profitable rest of your day.